Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. What does remote ID and tracking mean for AMA members? Seattle tunnel tour conducted by underground drone flight. And suspected poachers shoot down conservationist drone. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. AMA has published some additional guidance after the FAA's Aviation Rulemaking Committee Advisory Panel made recommendations to the agency on creating standards for remote identification and tracking UAS. The ARC identified technologies to allow law enforcement, homeland defense, national security, and air traffic control communities to remotely track and identify UAS in the airspace. One recommendation made by the panel requires that remote ID and tracking should only apply to aircraft that have capability to fly autonomously by navigating between more than one point without active control of the pilot, or flying beyond 400 feet using a real-time sensor or camera. This means that model aircraft not capable of autonomous or long-range operations do not have to comply. An alternative requires UAS to comply with remote ID and tracking with only a few exemptions. These exemptions include UAS for law enforcement or under air traffic control, models not capable of flying beyond 400 feet, and models waived or exempted by the FAA or community-based organizations like AMA. AMA believes remote identification and tracking for certain UAS makes sense at some level, depending on the UAS sophistication and capability. AMA has advocated for a common-sense approach to remote identification and tracking that doesn't harm our hobby or low-risk operations. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. After some of the less flattering drone news of the last few weeks, let's talk about some of the good news. A 92-year-old hunter who became lost in the woods in Shenandoah County, Virginia, was located by authorities using a drone borrowed from nearby Loudoun County. The search was conducted when William Luther McDonnell did not return home from a hunting trip. Several law enforcement agencies were asked to assist, including the Loudoun County Sheriff's Department, which had recently purchased the drone as part of its Project Lifesaver program. The Montgomery County, Alabama Sheriff's Department has a new tool for search and rescue operations, thanks to a donation from the Alzheimer's and Autism Outreach Group. AOG has donated a drone equipped with thermal imaging technology to the department. The mission of the organization is to help those suffering from conditions which can sometimes make it difficult for them to find their way back home. The drone is a great search tool, according to Montgomery County Sheriff Derek Cunningham. A new specialized drone developed by two medical professionals may one day give ordinary people the ability to assist with simple first aid during natural disasters. The drone, known as HERO, is the work of Dr. Italo Subbarau, a disaster medicine expert and senior associate dean of William Carey University College of Osteopathic Medicine, and Guy Paul Cooper, Jr., a fourth-year medical student at WCU-COM. DART drones and Global Aerospace have announced a partnership that will provide small unmanned aircraft system operators with exclusive resources and opportunities to increase the safety culture within the drone industry. DART drones will be the exclusive UAV training partner of Global Aerospace's SM4 safety program. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Like many public works programs, the Seattle SR-99 Alaskan Way Viaduct Tunnel Program is years behind schedule, over budget, and has been fraught with issues. Now celebrating some recent milestones, a drone was used to fly through the tunnel in an attempt to give future users the underground bird's eye view to show how the completed tunnel will look. The two-mile tunnel will carry State Route 99 under downtown Seattle to South Lake Union in the north. 
The tunnel was bored using a massive tunnel boring device, literally the world's largest diameter tunnel boring machine known as Bertha. Work began in late July of 2013. The Washington State Department of Transportation flew the camera drone along the two-mile span a few weeks ago, resulting in the video tour that illustrated that the on-again, off-again program was actually making serious progress. As evidenced by the ability to fly the entire length of the tunnel, the tunnel's completion is expected in early 2019, though we expect to see a few more drone flights before then. A controversial oceanic conservation group, Sea Shepherd, lost a drone Christmas Eve while monitoring suspected poachers at sea and while attempting to protect porpoises in the Gulf of Mexico. Sea Shepherd vessel MV John Paul DeGiorio was conducting patrols at 21.30 local time when the crew reported suspicious activity and launched a DJI multi-rotor to observe. The Sea Shepherd Matrice drone traveled nearly three miles for the vessel in an attempt to provide protection for the Vaquita porpoise and Totoboa baths. The crew remotely observed a small vessel in the area. Persons on board the skiff fired five shots at the Matrice, causing the operators to retreat, though the examination of the footage showed at least one of the skiff personnel to be carrying a firearm. In later operations, the drone returned to observe other skiffs, resulting in more gunfire. Some 13 shots later, the Matrice was lost at sea, with the last shot resulting in the drone's monitor going dark, reading disconnected. In the past, Sea Shepherd reports that poachers have attempted to strike their drones with rocks, bricks, and even fish. However, this incident is the first time that the drones have been shot at. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. With additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. See you next week.